Hey everyone, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. So last week I did a video review of the Pow Kitty A13, which is a small tabletop arcade machine. And I had mentioned that I had bought a bunch of different parts to improve the quality of the device itself. So this is the video where I'm gonna actually walk you through everything. So starting here, we have the Seimitsu PS15 low profile buttons. Now these are $2.45 each, and I picked these because they are supposed to be some of the best all around buttons for arcade machines. Sanwa buttons are also very popular, but those are actually a little bit more sensitive, and so you can accidentally push the button with those. These I've been told require a little bit more force, so that way if you're resting your fingers on the buttons themselves, you won't accidentally trigger them. So I figured this was gonna be the best fit for my type of gameplay, which is that I like to play just all sorts of arcade games, not just fighting games or beat em ups or things like that, so I thought this would just be a good balance for me. So next up is this Sanwa detachable joystick lever. Now it's important to get one that's detachable because you need to be able to take off the lever so that you can close the device itself. And in general, Sanwa levers are just known as being pretty good. You know, they're just kind of like a standard arcade stick lever at this point. And at $30, I figured that was gonna be a good investment. And I'm really just starting to learn about how arcade systems work and how all these components work. And I figured that this was a good standard baseline for me to start with. And at $30, I think that price really matches this device overall. You know, it's a $100 device, so you don't want to put a $300 joystick lever in it. And the last piece of hardware here is just this really simple Sanwa $4 clear ball top. The thing about it is this device is so red, I tried to get things that weren't red at all. So I got buttons that weren't red, and then I got a ball top that just kind of hopefully will take away some of that red from the device itself. And finally, I mentioned in my review that I wish the device was a little bit heavier, so I bought these steel adhesive wheel weights. And they're not heavy, it's only something like 10 or 12 ounces altogether, but you can put each of them strategically in the bottom of the device to make it a little bit more balanced. So here's your before shot, right? So you can see that they have just a lot of red going on. I don't like that they have red buttons on there as well. And I also bought buttons that had a black rim around them. Hopefully that'll take away some of that red too. And full disclosure, I also bought a custom made sticker from Sakura Retro Modding, which I'll put on later on. It hasn't come in the mail yet. They're shipping it from France, but I'll also be adding that in the future too. So really this is just the first step in all the modding. We're gonna do all the hardware stuff first. Okay, opening up the device itself, you have a total of 11 screws. So you have six on the outside, and then you have five on the inside, and they're covered by these little rubber pieces. Now, I had read a lot from people who had taken this apart, and they said the power button was the most fragile piece of this entire device. So when you're disassembling the device itself, you're supposed to turn the power button on. That way, all of the pieces and components squish together, and it makes it easier when you're pulling everything apart. Okay, so let's get to it. I'm just gonna remove all these little rubber covering things here, and then I'm going to unscrew all of the different screws. And all 11 of these screws are the exact same, so don't worry about mixing them up or anything else like that. Okay, so to open it up, you just gently pry it up. I'm gonna pry it away from the power button, that way I don't make any sort of sudden movements with it. Okay, you can see here the power button's intact. You can see the little connector there, everything's okay. So I think I did all right. So now I'm just gonna remove this main board here. And because I had the power on, I wanna make sure I unplug the battery cable. And it's really snug in there, so make sure you just kind of wiggle it out. And you can see here, there's the power button. I'm not gonna mess with it at all. Okay, so I'm just gonna put this card away here and then I'm gonna remove the battery. And you can verify that it is a 4,000 milliamp hour battery here. Okay, so let's start with the joystick lever itself. There's only four screws holding it in place and they have these little red coverings on it so you have to remove those coverings as well. And there you go. Now, honestly, this has the same kind of profile as the Sanwa one as well. It has that metal kind of shield to it. But I've been told that this one, the Sanwa one, actually won't fit in the plastic screw holes here. And yep, look at that. So it doesn't fit all the way. And the advice I got from somebody was to go and file down the metal sheet here to make it fit. Uh, but honestly, I don't think that's the right thing to do. And so we're gonna try this later on. Let's work on the buttons first. Now these buttons are kind of tricky to get out. There's no real easy way to do it. You're supposed to push on each side with something to pop them out. 
but as you can see my plastic sponger is not working very well and I can't do it with my fingers either. So I switched over to a metal sponger. If you don't have one of these, you can just use a flathead screwdriver, but you just want to push down one side at a time while putting pressure with your other hand. And then eventually it'll just pop out. Now these cables are really snug on there. I was not able to pull them out by my hand, so I had to use some needle nose pliers. But even then it's hard because you have to be a little bit forceful, but you have to also be kind of careful because as you can see, when I pulled one of them out, the black wire, which is the ground wire, came undone from the connector. And so you can kind of just see it hanging loosely there. And so I'm gonna have to reconnect those later and I'll show you how I did that. And as you can see with this wire that came out, I tried to push it back into the connector. It really wasn't working, so I ended up having to use a different connector. We'll work on that in a bit. One note I do want to make is the fact that there is no negative or positive polarity with these buttons. The buttons that come with the device have a positive and negative side, but it actually doesn't matter. And I had to go and search online. So it doesn't matter if you connect the ground wire to one and the signal wire to another. It doesn't matter which one you use. So to install the buttons, all you have to do is you just line them up so that the two pieces that are sticking out align with the two parts that they're connected to. And then you just push it through. And you have to use a little bit of force. But after you get the hang of it, it's pretty easy. And you'll know when it's in, it'll give you a really nice satisfying click. And then from there, you just reconnect the wires. I recommend that you do it one button at a time. That way you don't forget which wire is connected to which button. And again, like I mentioned, it's a bit of a process. You just kind of go back and forth and back and forth until you can push it all the way through. Now, as I mentioned before, I really messed up that ground wire and I completely disconnected it. But I have a solution for it and I'll show it to you here in a minute. But for now, I'm just popping out each button and I'm replacing it with a new button and then reaffixing the wires. Okay, so around this time, I started to get a little bit nervous. I'm like, oh crap, you know, I'm in over my head here. I'm not an electrician. What am I supposed to do here? I need to get these two wires connected to the thing. And as you can see here, I actually broke the little bracket thing. And so initially I was looking online to see if I could buy a new bracket, but then I went and I checked my toolbox and I found that I had these little cable connectors, which I had used from maybe like a stereo install 10 years ago or something like that, but I still had them and I thought, okay, well, I'll just try to use these things. And the plastic in them was a little bit too long, so I had to trim them a little bit with scissors. But after that, it worked perfectly. So if you run into this problem where you have to go and connect new wires to it, instead of having to go and order and wait for a hundred of these connectors to show up, all you really have to do is just run over to Home Depot and grab some of these for like a dollar. So at this point, all I did is push it in to make sure it's connected to the button. And then I twisted the two wires together and then put them in together. From there, all I did is just crimp it shut. And honestly, now these wires are probably more secure than the other ones. It definitely doesn't look pretty, but hey, it works. Okay, so going back to the joystick levers, one of the things I noticed is that they basically have the same metal plates and they have the same screws and same size and everything. So I thought, why don't I just swap out the metal plates? That way I know they're going to fit. So I grabbed the old metal plate, I removed it, and then I took off this weird plastic film that it had on there. And then I grabbed the new sawmill lever, and then I just took that new plate off. From there, I just installed the old metal plate onto the new lever. And moment of truth. It fits like a glove. Okay, so let me just reinstall all the screws here. Connect the wire back in. And there we go. Okay, so at this point, the hardware part is done. So I'm gonna put in the battery, reconnect it to the main board, and then I'm gonna connect the main board back onto the device. OK, 
Okay, so last step is to add these new weights. Now these weights were about $8. I've heard people can use like a roll of pennies and things like that to weigh down their arcade sticks. But honestly, I thought maybe I would get these really nice adhesive ones just so that way I can really have control over where I want them to stay. In general, I don't want them to conflict with anything that's on the board. So for example, I'm not going to put the weights near the battery at all. And I also don't want them touching the main board as well as the speaker itself. So in general, the little control board is where I'm going to put a lot of the weights, and then I also want to try to line them up as much as I can towards the front of the device. So honestly, at this point, I just kind of eyeballed it and guessed and then put a bunch of weights where I thought that they would fit. And I figured if they didn't work, I could just pull them off and put them somewhere else. Okay, so here are the results of my first test here. As you can see here, a lot of the weights are near the front of the device as opposed to the back of it. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that the screen itself is gonna be near the back when it's open. And so you're already gonna have a bunch of weight at the back. You wanna have a counterweight at the front. And I tried to keep it balanced across the left and right sides as well. But when I started trying to put it back together, I did find some resistance. So I had to remove a couple of the weights because they were blocking my ability to close the device itself. And on top of that, I had a couple weights that were too close to the joystick lever, so they were grinding against it, and so I had to remove those ones as well. But in the end, those are the only two modifications I ended up having to do for the weights. Okay, so we're going to reattach here, being very careful with that power button. And I'm just going to put a few screws in here just to make sure everything works okay. moment of truth and look at that now it's not perfect obviously it didn't take away a lot of that red that's on the device itself but i do like that contrast to the black and colored buttons here and if you look at the lever here you can see that it isn't a full circle and that's done by design the lever itself is nice and rounded and so if you were to install it like this you would see that it behaves a lot like the original stick on the device itself, and that it just comes in and out as you twist it. But the device also comes with this little plastic shield, and you can see here, it's not fully rounded on one side. So what you do is you align this plastic shield to the little indentations on the circle, and then you install the lever itself. Now that'll allow it to spin in place. That way if you happen to spin as you're playing, it's not going to come undone. Which is kind of a neat trick. And so in order to uninstall it, you have to grip onto the plastic shield and then you unscrew the lever itself. Now unfortunately the plastic shield does not fit in this little compartment here and I couldn't really figure out a good way to store it. So unfortunately, you're just gonna have to live with this little plastic shield outside of your device. And I'm worried it's gonna get lost, but you know, I'm just gonna have to pay attention to it. And of course, if you ever do lose it, you can absolutely use your joystick lever without it. You just won't have that neat feature of preventing it from becoming accidentally undone. It would have been super cool if all that fit in the compartment, but unfortunately it's just not working. So don't lose your plastic little shield here. Okay, so let's get a look at these buttons here. I really like the way they look. You know, I just like that black rim around them. It just kind of makes them stand out a little bit more, and I really like that. And man, the feel of these buttons is night and day from the original. They just feel so much better put together and smooth, and they just kind of glide when you push down on them. And I really like that clear ball top. It just kind of has a distinct look to everything. Now overall, the weight balance is very nice. I really lucked out in putting them in the right place that first time around. I don't know how I got so lucky. Now this joystick lever also comes with this small dust cover too. And it's kind of neat looking and it also takes away a little bit from that red in the device itself, but it's up to you whether or not you want to use it. Just bear in mind that that also doesn't fit in the compartment, so it's another thing that you might lose. Okay, so let's do some gameplay testing, make sure everything works okay. 
And honestly, it plays really well. You know, I really liked this device before I put all these components in, but now that they're all in, I'm so happy with it. I really do enjoy having these new components. And it was kind of expensive, you know, it was probably $60 altogether for these new parts. And sure, maybe this turns it into a $160 device if you think about it that way. But the way I look at it, I'm just happy to have this device I already like, and then putting a little bit extra money into it to make me love it even more. All right, so now that I'm satisfied with everything, I'm just gonna put all the screws back in and then put those little rubber coverings on top and then I'm done. All right, so here we are with the hardware upgrades for the Pal Kitty A13. I'm really happy with this. I love the weight distribution on it. I really like this new joystick lever and these buttons are just awesome. I'll do another video here soon to talk about the different software updates that I did to the device as well, but for now this is just the hardware pieces. So if you like the new buttons, or you like the new joystick lever, or you like both, I'm going to leave links down below to how to buy all of these things. I bought them all from the same website. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming!